Some time ago, while Einstein was in Boston staying at a hotel, he was given a copy of Edison's questionnaire to see whether he could answer the questions. And one of the questions in that particular questionnaire was, what is the speed of sound? To which Einstein replied that, I don't know. I don't bother my memory with such facts that I can easily find in any textbook. Now I kind of started to treat Google as the modern day equivalent of textbooks. And let's face it, like the search engines are one of the most powerful tools ever created by mankind. But like any other tool, you need time to practice them and also master. And most of us probably started Googling while in middle school to just like copy paste the homework and then we gradually went to high school and used Google to cheat on an exam. I mean, I know I did, because let's face it, it is not possible for the human mind to store unlimited amounts of information and this is why we Google. But when the paradox of choice hits you, how can you improve your Google search? And this is a fundamental overview of some of the Google search tips I use to speed up my search and also to find more relevant and hopefully accurate results. Now the cool thing is that search is getting better. So instead of searching for phrases like what's the weather like today, you can simply search weather. Instead of searching what's the closest airport, you can turn on your location and essentially just type in airport. And the same concept can be applied to something else as well, like supermarkets or coffee shops. And you can also combine words and symbols in your day-to-day -day search to make your results more precise. If you want to narrow your search for an exact match, you can put a word or phrase inside quotes. For example, tallest building. If you want to search for price, you can actually put the currency in front of a number. And this can be quite useful because instead of just like going to a website and just like narrowing down your search by applying various filters, you can simply type this stuff on Google and Google will show up all of these websites and just like create the filter for you. So you can exclude a word from your search by putting a minus sign immediately in front of the term you want to exclude and make sure you include the space before the minus sign. One more cool thing you can do is just like you can combine searches and you can do that by simply putting like the word or in between like your each search query. And this is great for comparisons. You can just like put like marathon or race or visualize versus visualize. This is kind of great if you want to identify the differences between different words because words have different meanings all the time. And it's also good if you want to just like check the spelling of a word. You can also search for a specific site by just simply typing site in front of a domain name. So here's how it looks like. It's kind of basic, but it works. And if you want to search for related sites, you can apply the same recipe and say related and then put the site name. And for this example, I'm going to say like relatedquora.com. And as you can see, I'm getting a list of sites that are related to Quora in some way or fashion. And these are simply like fundamental Google search tips. And I believe that you can easily introduce people how to do a basic search by just showing a comparison and explaining that, hey, you can do the same thing with Instagram by searching for hashtags, right? You can also do the same thing with Twitter when you're actually searching for the at sign. So you're placing the hashtag in front of a word and you're placing the at sign in front of just like another word if you want to search for a specific thing, a specific person. And again, this is some basic stuff. And maybe I'm gonna do a video at some point explaining some more advanced stuff as well. And, and yeah, like sometimes memorizing stuff can be a waste of time. And this is why you are searching through the greatest and the largest almanac in the history of humankind. Again, you try to Google your way out of a test, a tricky question, a quiz. And then you start doing fancier stuff. You wanna create a blog, you wanna start writing, you wanna start a YouTube channel. And the truth is that I learned most of this stuff through Googling. For example, like back in the day, I used to have this WordPress blog and to make it work, I had to Google my way out of everything. I had to experiment, I had to just like install plugins, I had to install themes, I had to make them work, I had to edit the code. And yeah, Google was a great companion. And then you might want to start like a micro project that involves a little bit more than a simple website. So you start Googling again and just go on. And there's also like a weird paradox where Google can help you see the bigger picture and can also prevent you from seeing the bigger picture. Tons of companies who are trying just to boost their rank in search. And I'm not gonna even talk about the media. But yeah, getting back to my train of thoughts, you Google books, you Google facts, you Google documentaries, fake news, everything and nothing at the same time. You're slaloming through everything, you get things wrong, you get things right. But just remember, Googling can make you better. Through Google, you can find people and places having the same interests as you. And Googling can also help you become like a writer or a cook or a programmer or a musician. For example, nowadays most of the development work requires expert Googling skills. 
because you are building on the shoulders of giants through fast learning how new technologies work, debugging, code, or simply reading and understanding the code written by those who are more advanced than you. Googling also teaches you how to ask better questions and how to phrase these questions so that you can get better results. It kind of teaches you how to play around with data structures. And by spending time Googling, you also learn how to better assess the quality of the websites you are visiting, but also the quality of the information. And also not to click on the wrong banner. And yes, Googling is a term. And while this might change in the future, searching the internet is going to be a thing until we learn how to plug our heads into the cloud and become connected to the internet and start searching by simply thinking.